Good morning everybody, Sarah here at Fisher Price Ranch. First of all, make sure to hit that subscription button down below and the notification bell for updates on our next videos. So, yesterday was kind of a bad day. Um, kind of learned a lot and uh, we'll go over that when we get out into the pastures with the goats. But uh, a couple of things happened. I got headbutted in the lip, so I don't know if you can see, I got a fat lip today. <laughs> Uh, that goat is going to get butchered. Um, but anyway, so today we are going to milk s'mores. She is our alpine boa cross doe, the big monster. And even though she has twins on her, she is engorged with so much milk. She produces so much milk for us. Um, she's kind of one of our, uh, accidents from yesterday like one of the issues that we had I'll go over what's going on with her later um, but today we are going to try something new for me and that is a milking machine I've never used one uh, I've always used my hands but my arthritis is getting bad so it, it's time so I just ordered a cheapie off off the internet so figure this out together <laughs> and uh, let's get started all right so here it comes in the box my problem is I had to YouTube <laughs> how to put it together because it's in Chinese. I don't know how to read that. So, this is the pulsator that it comes with. And we've got our, um, our lid for the jar that the hoses connect to. We've got our hoses, our plug to plug it in. And then we've got our two teacups. Right. And then this is our motor to run it. And then we just have our jar that the milk goes into. All right, so the way that it connects, if I remember how to do it, of course you put your, oops, already starting wrong. Let's put this on here first. Now this thing cost me like 50 bucks. Um, I figured I'd just try it out, see what happens. I did ask some other goat people for reviews. Some people said it was junk. Other people said they've used it for years. Um, because it's so cheap, you could just buy a new one pretty pretty easily. There we go. Just having a little issue there. Okay, so it's on there. All right, so we have our motor. Let me move the bottle out of the way for a minute. And then this connects to here. Now they said you could connect. right to this if you didn't want the pulsator, but you really need one for your goats. I don't see it on this one. It was a slightly different model online that I was looking at. All right, so that connects there, and then we have this hose connects to the bottle on one side. And it has a little nut on there. I guess just make sure it's in there nice and snug. And then this one, has a split in it, and that's to connect each of these to the teat cups. And then this one, see now I'm lost, I've already gotten lost. I don't know where it connects to this. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, maybe it was in between? problem is I don't see, oh here we go, I get it, I get it. So it's got a little circle here and that connects into it. Interesting. There's a little notch out and there's one on here. So it goes a specific way. Okay, there we go, it's plugged in. All right, that was interesting. Okay, and then the other end of this hose will connect to this bottle. All right, so pretty much I guess how it works is you put these on your dough, 
The milk will flow through this into the jar. We've got our pulsator, which will turn the machine on and off every like however many seconds. It actually you could set it. This one is set for four seconds. So we'll just try that and see how it works. And uh, so this suctions. So I just have to be careful not to overflow this jar. Now this jar will do 48 ounces. 48 ounces is to right here though. So it'll actually do quite a bit more. But like I said, I've never used a milker. And I know once you have that suction going, the milk will just keep on flowing. Um, she's got a pretty big bag. I don't know how far she'll fill this up. So it's just going to be something new, I guess. <laughs> we'll figure it out as we go. So I'm going to take this all back apart. We're going to wash it with hot soapy water um, since it's new. <clears throat> and uh, then we'll get started. All right, I was going to take this apart to wash it, and I couldn't get the hose out. So I thought I'd show you these actually have like little clamps that you push down and then pull the hose out. So if somebody's ever used an air compressor, kind of the same idea, you push that down and then it pulls out. I can't do it one handed. I didn't put my camera on the tripod, but I just wanted to show you guys that. So it's kind of neat. Keeps it from falling out. All right. So real quick before I went outside, I just got this all washed, which I will wash it at the end of the video. It's so easy. I actually really like that. I know a lot of people complain. <clears throat> Not having to wash their milking machine because they have all the parts but because this is so simple it was really fast I think I did it in five minutes it wasn't bad I just made a hot water bath with soapy water I know some people add vinegar I'm gonna um, if you want go ahead and comment below and let me know what you guys wash yours with um, but anyway it was really really fast so I wanted to go ahead and test this out before I went outside because outside my electrical is a little more a little more complicated so I plugged it in um, it has a little switch on here, and it turns on and off. Now, four seconds, I went ahead and turned it on. It seemed to me, it was a, it was a good amount, and it shuts off for a second, um, a half a second. So I guess I could change that, um, maybe make it a full second that it shuts off, but I'm going to let you guys kind of listen to it and uh, see what you think. But we'll test it out, and we can make adjustments as we go. So, I mean, I think that sounds pretty good. Um, like I said, I, I don't know. We can make adjustments as we go. I'll see how her milk is flowing. And uh, also I saw in the video they tested the suction amount on here. And they just put it on their arm. So I'm just going to see kind of how much it's got there. So, I mean, it, it holds pretty good. And it's not too much. So, I'm going to go ahead and shut this off so I can have my arm back. It does hold pretty good, so you can feel that pressure. Um, Alright, so I guess we'll go ahead and head out there. We'll get her up on the milk and stand, which is always a chore. And uh, the one thing I, I wish they did have was a holder for all this stuff. I, I had it sitting on the counter, I'll show you, without the box. I just used the box that it came in. But it just it keeps wanting to fall over. Um, and taking it outside, it would just be more of a hassle. So I just kind of put everything in here and uh, the pulsator right there in the middle so it holds them both standing. So that seems to work. It, it's not going to move around. So it'll work for now. I'll probably find something a little nicer, cleaner um, to use maybe at the dollar store or something, a little Tupperware or something like that. But uh, all right, so I'm ready to head out there, put everything in here. I'm going to unplug it. So I think this size of a box would work great, and then it could just hold everything. And I could be more specific with it, you know, roll up the hoses and slide them in on the side. But since we're just going to go out and use it, we'll just leave it just like that. Come on. Up. Come on. Morris. There you go. Come on. Relax. Easy. Hang on a second. No, you have to be all the way up. No cheat. Come on. Get up there. One, two, three. Oh, you go. <laughs> all right. All right. 
So as you can see, her udder's pretty full. Oh, sorry about the sunshine. So it's gonna be a nice day today. All right, so now what I did was I brought me a jar of hot soapy water. We're just gonna clean her up a little bit. And she's probably gonna fight me. Hey, relax. Calm down, would you? Relax. It's just cleaning your eyes, that's all. <laughs> well, we're going to see how this goes. I already see it going to be interesting. Alright, so now I'm just going to do a little bit of a dry off. Will you relax? Hey, don't step on it. Well, at least you missed the towel. Calm down. Alright. She's never had this done before. She's been milked before, but she's never been with a machine. All right, here we go. So you want to turn it on so there's that, that suction. Hey, relax, relax. All right, we're gonna hold on a second there. And we're gonna hobble her. All right, so we're gonna hobble her. So that just means you're gonna lift one leg up and tie it, or just tie it down so they can't move it. In her case, we're just gonna tie it up. So you just do a nice string around one foot. We're gonna tie it up top, so we're just gonna lift her leg about like that, so it's out of the way. And then she can't have it back until we're done. That should do it. All right, I'm gonna give her her goodies back. And that should keep her busy. Well, don't do it like that, silly girl. All right, we're just gonna try this again and see what happens. I may have to tie her a little differently because she's being awkward. Okay. any milk yet. Alright, let's try that again. Make sure I've got milk coming out. Okay, there's milk. There's milk. Alright. Let's try that again. I'm not, I'm getting suction. I mean, they're stuck to her. Oh, there it goes. Just took a second. There we go. Look at that. We got milk. Woohoo! Now, only one side is going at the moment, but her other side isn't very full because they still kind of nursing off that one side. Heck yeah, we got milk. That's exciting. And all I got to do is stand here. <laughs> So we're gonna let that go. See how long it takes to empty her out. She's gonna try and poop now, figures. Move this out of the way so she misses it. We've had some issues with the plops. We did a little bit of a food change. Relax, calm down, girl. And uh, so we're having some plop issues we've been given. She hasn't had any, so I was surprised just now. But we'll give her some probiotics. Calm down, girl. See if we can get this other side flowing. Yeah, it's starting to a little bit. See, we're getting some flow on that other one. Not as much, but like I said, she's probably almost empty on that one side anyway. So, 
Easy, girl. Easy. Relax. Relax. Easy, girl. Easy. You're okay. Here. So one issue is she's standing on the milk line, so I definitely need to like, there we go, maybe hang the hoses up a little bit or just hold them out of the way, but it's looking like she's empty now because we're not getting any more milk flow. So now what I, what I did is I just stick my finger in there to let the air out, the pressure. You don't want to just pull it off the teat. Hey, will you relax? I'm taking them off, okay? There we go. There. All right. Get off my hose. All right. So definitely need to make a few adjustments as far as how we set up here. But we got just over eight ounces. So that's pretty good for two does nursing on her. She seemed fuller, but I guess she just carries a big bag. But that was still exciting. Got to try our milking machine, and I do like it. Pretty quick, simple, to the point. So we'll take this milk in. We'll let her back down and uh, get her back into the in with her kids. There's your foot back, okay, girl? All right. So I'll, I'll go put her back, and then we'll be right back. All right. So we're back in the house. The one nice thing about this is now I don't have to strain my milk because. Now it's clean because it went straight in there and I didn't have to deal with, I'll show you real quick, um, you can see all the dirt and hair sitting on top of the lid here and uh, whenever you hand milk, all that flies around, it gets in your milk and then you have to strain it all out. So because it went straight into the jar, I don't have to deal with that. So we put it right into our jar to go in the fridge. Just want to be careful not to fling any of that. So that's why I don't know if I like this little blue tabby thing that holds the lid on there. I might take that off because I don't know if I like that. Because I could have been done already, but I had to worry about that. So we've got our nice clean milk in there. We're going to pour it right into our jar. So for two giant kids nursing, we got two cups of milk. So that's pretty good. Uh, she gives a lot when she's not nursing kids. And her kids are, oh, what are they, over, just over, no, are they just going on two weeks? I don't even remember anymore. So many kids to worry about. But I'm going to go ahead and put this in the fridge. <clears throat> All right. So now we're going to go ahead and clean this. All right, so we're filling up our sink with hot soapy water. Got my jar here, we'll get that soaked in a minute. Alright, and then like I had said before on these, you have to push down and then the hose pops out. So I, I really actually like that a lot because it makes everything um, not fall apart <laughs> while you're busy doing the milking. So that's really nice. Okay, so we're just gonna, I'm gonna take all this apart here in a minute. And then the nice thing is this, um, so this side, I don't know if you can see that, this side of the hose stays clean, only air goes through there. This side you can see a little bit of condensation in it from the, the milk from out of the jar. So they had it to where you can actually take this hose off and clean it, and then this stays nice and clean. So that's really neat, too. <clears throat> all right. So now we're just going <clears> to <throat> rinse all this really good. I'm going to take this last piece apart for the, the lid. And then we have to run... Um, oh, we got to take these off, too. Same thing on these. They're the locking. So that's really neat. I like that. So everything locks together. Oh, not pushing it hard enough. There we go. 
Alrighty. So this is really hot water. And then we have to get all that hot water to go through our hoses. So you just kind of feed it through there. Now I know if I was going to sell this milk commercially, I'd have to be licensed, of course. But I know they have strict rules on what you have to clean your stuff with. But this is just for us, you know. And uh, sometimes, excuse me, where'd you get that? My cats get everything. I don't even know where they find some of this stuff. Um, but anyway, so this milk is for us. Some of it we may not drink. We may use it for products um, that we might try later this year. So... Anyway, so that's it. This is all nice soapy water. Let it soak a minute. That hose is nice and full. <laughs> all right. Now we're going to drain that and then we're going to rinse everything with hot water. Yeah, I don't know that I like this thing. I may, I might take that off. I think it just kind of bothers me. Because <laughs> it gets in the way. So there's not that many pieces to this milking machine. I really like that. Alright, so now we will just go... Oh, a little hole. Rinse that out real good. And then on this one, because it has the two piece, I'm going to go through the single side to rinse it. And it'll go out both ends. Ooh, that's really hot water. There we go. Yeah really hot. Alright. So there we go. And then we just have our jar of soapy water with the uh, rag. And I'm just going to use this just for that. So what I'll do is we'll just let that rinse real good. It had soapy water in it anyway. And we'll rinse out our rags and let them dry. And then we'll have those for next time. And like I said, I'm probably going to get like a container to hold all this in. That way it's not so, you know, everywhere and it's not a box that's going to fall apart. We'll get something nice that'll work real well. So we're going to head out into the barnyard and I'm going to talk to you guys about what I was talking about earlier. Kind of some bad news that I came across yesterday. Um, yeah. Alright, so we're headed to the barnyard. Um, I'm going to show you one of my issues that I came across. Now, s'mores, as you've seen in my other videos, I talk really highly of her. Um, she just has the bad, bad back feet. Um, but she's over 200 pounds. She's just a monster meaty doe. Very well built. Um, so I was very excited to get her bred into the Kikos for genetics so we can kind of get some meatier Kikos. Now the Kiko does tend to be between 80 and 125 pounds and occasionally like I've got one doe, Trinidad, who's 156 pounds and I like those bigger meaty does. Um, she's standing there behind me. This big girl, she's 156 pounds. Really nice doe and uh, we can see a lot of ours are quite, quite a bit smaller. I think our smallest is 88 pounds. And uh, so, hey guys. What's up, huh? Hi. 
Hey, this is Peppermint. She's one of my favorites, aren't ya? Yeah. I have so many favorites, actually. Oh, goodness. So anyway, I'm going to show you what our issue is. All right, so there's S'mores. Um, I'm going to show you just how good a quality she is. You can see her top line is, sorry about the sun, nice and straight. She's very well built, put together. Try and block that sun for you. Um, nice big chest on her. She carries herself very well. And she's also a good milker. So my issue with her is, she, as you guys saw, she's got one by one teats. Have never had any issues with her, specifically other than her feet. Now I was very excited, there she is, to get her daughter. Now last year S'mores gave us two boys. And uh, this year she gave us a boy and a girl. So I got very lucky. I finally got my dough that is 50% Kiko. S'mores, what are you doing? And she's my sweet girl. She's only mad at me for so long. But anyway, there's her two kids. You can see her daughter looks just like her. Very well built. Nice top line. Good quality dough. But we have one issue with her. And I will try and show it to you. All right, so our issue with her, <clears throat> I gotta flip her over. Easy, easy. She has five nipples. Ugh, calm down. So she has three. I guess she, we're gonna do it standing up, hold on. She has three nipples on this side. She's got one big one and two little ones. You can see the big one here, and then two small ones right above it. This side, she has one big one, and a little one right above it. All right, so my issue is a couple of years ago, let me get out of the sun for you. A couple of years ago, uh, we weren't really into the Kikos just yet. I was just kind of learning about them. And we got some Nubians and they were bred with a Kiko and I didn't pay any attention to it. All of our Nubians have one by one teats. And then we got some really nice daughters. We kept those. Uh, we lost one. She broke her leg uh, real bad. And uh, so we lost that one. But we kept the other one. And then she got pregnant. Well, then I realized she had four teats. And then her babies, she had triplets on, as a first freshener, which were three-quarter Kiko. And they all had extra teats. And I milk my Kikos, and my belief, I know I'm going to, you know, other people are going to disagree, and that's totally your opinion, but for my herd, I'd rather breed them correctly the first time. I know a lot of people say they're just meat goats, it doesn't matter. Um, to me, it does. And I like one by one teats, and that's all I will ever keep in my herd. So unfortunately, we're not keeping a marble. And uh, we're going to call her from the herd. S'mores. Yeah, we're going to call her from the herd as well. So I had a few people, because I did post this on my farm page yesterday when I found out. And a few people said certain genetics can have one by one teats. But if you breed the, right, the wrong pair together, they can produce the extra teats. So she was bred with a different buck last year. She gave us two boys. We lost one. He drowned in the water trough, as I mentioned in one of my previous videos. And, uh, ooh, don't touch that electric fence. <laughs> uh, so anyway, my friend took the other buck. And so she is going to look at him today to see what he has. Now, if he has one by one teats, I will go ahead and hold on to s'mores, breed her to a different buck, and see what happens. But if she gives a, if he has one by, or more than one by one, and Marble has more than one by one, obviously, then obviously it's definitely her. And uh, I have kids from, like Marble, her, her dad is Buddy. I have a bunch of kids from him, and every single one is one by one teeth. So I know it's not him. You're chewing on my arm here. And, uh, so anyway, that's kind of my dilemma. So I'm waiting on my Buddy to a friend to call me back and let me know what his look like. Um, I kind of am having my fingers crossed, but at the same time, I don't have my high hopes for this one. And it really sucks. Now, S'more, she's seven years old. She's getting up there. She's not that old. I mean, she could live to be 14, 15, 17. Who knows? Um, 
but if her son does have one by or more than one by one teats, we are not going to sell her. We're actually going to process her um, because she's so big and we are almost out of goat meat. So she'll fill the freezer and uh, she's got her feet issues, uh, which we've been working on. I'll continue to work on that um, just just to finish the videos as we go along and see if it is correctable. Um, but in the end, she may still end up in the freezer, unfortunately. Um, her daughter is very young. I mean, she's only two weeks or something like that, give or take. And so she has some great potential to do good on somebody else's farm that does not mind the extra teats. <clears throat> so that's kind of my dilemma. And I'm really bummed because I've had her for two years and I've worked really hard to try and get a daughter out of her that was half Kiko and I finally get it and kind of a waste of time for me so yeah so anyway I'm gonna go ahead and end this video I hope that the milking was helpful for you guys and then you kind of understand um, what I think about the extra teats I definitely make sure that I do not buy from anybody that has the extra teats in their herd to try and keep that going um, there are some Kikos out there that do have extra teats and people keep breeding them which is fine you know if you're just gonna eat them not a big deal but they're definitely not breeding stock in my opinion um, so eventually sometimes the extra teats can cause issues depending on how they form um, they could have issues for the kids to nurse or you can't milk them which I know a lot of Kiko breeders don't milk their Kikos, but I do. I, I really enjoy their milk, and we will be milking, I would say, at least three or four this year that um, have really nice udders, and they're producing a ton of milk. And uh, so we'll definitely be milking some, some of our Kikos this year, use their milk for products later. Um, so anyway, we'll see you guys next time.